this is a poetry recital and I have read the autobiography of the author of the poems. This is the autobiography and this is the poetry book which I'm going to be reading out of. They are of Edward Lord Herbert of Shearbury and the autobiography was published in 1886 by Sidney Lee and the reason I'm reading this poem is because Edward, Lord Herbert of Shearbury, it is said that one of his greatest virtues of all speculative writing was the virtue of originality. He had read such books as were accessible to him on the subject which he dealt with and none of them satisfied him and rejecting all their conclusions he wrote the questions they professed to answer out for himself no authority he said deserved a slavish adherence a philosopher must think for himself and no personal or professional ends to serve thus in itself was a sure sign that Edward Herbert was a sincere progressionist. The poems are written in a book, this one, in Old English, and I've read them. But this one that I am now going to be reading, I'll also read out loud. The Idea by Edward Lord Herbert of Shearbury All beauties vulgar eyes on earth do see At best but some imperfect copies be Of those the heavens did at first decree For though the ideas of each several kind Conceived above by the eternal mind Are such as none can error in them find since from his thoughts and pleasant does he bar and shout out all deformity so far that the least beauty near him is a star as nature yet from far the ideas views and does beside but vile materials choose we in her works observe no small abuse some of her figures there for foiled and blurred show as if heaven had no way concurred in shapes so dispor disproportioned and absurd. Which being again vexed with some hate and spite that doth in them vengeance and rage excite seem to be tortured and deformed quite while so being fixed they yet in them contain another sort of ugliness and stain being with old wrinkles interlined again lastly as if nature even did not know what colour every several part should owe they look as if their goals would overflow. Fair is the mark of good and foul of ill, although not so infallible, but still. The proof depends most on the mind and will. As good yet rarely in the foul is met, so it would as little by its union get as a rich jaw that were poorly set for since good first did at the fair begin foul being but a punishment for sin fares the true outside to the good within in these the supreme power then so doth guide nature's weak hand as he doth aid beside all by the creatures can be dignified while you in them see so exact a line that through each several part a glint doth shine 
of the original form, divine. Therefore the characters of fair and good are so set forth and printed in their blood as each in other may be understood that beauty so ac accompanied with grace and equally conspicuous in the face in a fair woman's outside takes the place thus while in her all rare perfection meets each as with joy its fellow beauty greets and varies so into a thousand sweets or if so tempting thought do so assault as doubtful she between two opinions halt a gentle blush corrects and mends the fault that so she still fairer and better grows without that thus she more to perf puffin owes that what fresh colour on her cheeks bestows to which again her lips shall such helps can add as boats will chase all grievous thoughts and fade and give what else can take make her good or glad as statues yet having framed in clay an hollow image afterwards convey the molten metal through each several way but when it once unto its place hath passed and then inward stature perfectly is cast do not throw away the outward clay at last so when that form the heavens at first decreed is finished within souls do not need their bodies more but would from them be freed for who shall still covered with the earth would lie who would not shake their feathers off and fly and be at least next to it a deity however then you must be most lovely here yet when you from all elements are clear you far more pure glorious shall appear thus from above I doubt not to behold your second self renewed in your own mould and rising thence fairer than can be told from whence ascending to the elect and blessed in your true joy you will not find at least that I in heaven shall know and love you best for while I do your coming there attend I shall much time on your idea spend and note how far you all others can send and thus though you more than an angel be since being here to sin and mischief free you will have raised yourself to their degree that so victorious over death and fate and happy in your everlasting state you shall triumph enter heaven's gate hasten not thither yet for as you are a beauty upon earth without compare you will show best still where you are most rare live all our lives then if the picture can here entertain and loving absent man much more the idea whence you first began.